Hello, Mac fans. I'm Duncan Fisher. Have you ever had one of those mornings where unexpected things just seem to drop out of thin air right on top of you and cause every kind of problem imaginable with the local authorities? Something like that happened to a friend of mine recently, and it brought to mind one of the most memorable matches from my days competing in the arenas. This story takes place later in my career, after I stopped taking some of the more dangerous free-for-all matches and concentrated on booking one-on-one -on -one feature matches. Now this particular match brought me to the Capellan Sector's arena, The Jungle. The carefully climate-controlled environment of The Jungle is a stark contrast to the open-air arena of Steiner Coliseum, and that creates a unique battlefield with many challenges. But it also contains many advantages for savvy and clever mech warriors, if they are quick enough to recognize them. Because of the controlled environment, insects and other fauna not native to Solaris 7 have, either intentionally or not, found a home inside the arena. These creatures have been in there so long, I seriously doubt if anybody remembers if they were intended to be. I remember it like it was yesterday. My opponent, a fellow Lyran by the name of Olga Borscht, attempted to hide her battle mech's heat signature by leaping into one of the larger trees and waiting for me to pass by. She fully intended to execute a dead drop death from above attack, but that day just wasn't her day. Unbeknownst to Borscht, she had unwittingly disturbed the mating nests of several of the jungle's larger tree-dwelling lizards, and that particular day, they were just not having it. In a rare display of aggression, the lizards swarmed Olga's mech. Now they did little in the way of damage to the machine, but they did prove adept at obscuring Olga's viewport and external cameras, to the point that she misstepped while in the tree. Unable to recover, her battle mech came crashing down in a rending of foliage with a smattering of smeared lizard parts. But the real damage was done when her battle mech landed right in front of me. It happened so fast that my own mech nearly tripped over her twisted and blood-caked machine. I have to give her credit, though. She recovered better than I've ever seen a pilot recover from a mishap of that magnitude. But it just wasn't fast enough to win the day. By the time Olga regained her mech's feet, I was already well on my way to taking them right back out from under her. Now, I admit it wasn't my most glorious arena victory, but it does prove that the arena is as much a participant in a match as the mechs and their pilots. <laughs> you know, it's funny only now when I think about it. She might have won that match, but for one bit of luck that went my way. If I had pushed just a little faster through that area of the arena, I would have been directly under her when she fell. But I wouldn't feel too badly for Olga Borscht. The next year, she won a minor championship, went on to a successful career as a jump jet fuel corporate executive, or something important like that, I'm sure of it. This has been the Duncan Fisher Minute. The Duncan Fisher Minute is written by David Martin, with additional material by George Ledoux. Produced and performed by George Ledoux and Voices in My Head Productions. Based on characters created by Ferret Bodwin and George Ledoux. Any similarity to persons living or dead is ridiculous. 